was due the last Sunday in the month of July. Today I want to teach on the subject that will sound very unnecessary. But you will be glad today that the Lord opened our eyes to understand it. Scripture says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? In drawing a straight line, if you deviate from the point of origin, the more you go, the bigger the margin of error begins, becomes. The further you go, the bigger it is. It just dawned on me that so many of us, as many that have been called into the vineyard, we do not understand what the call is. I didn't say what our calling is. Because the call is one and the same. I will shock you today with the scriptures. Understanding the call is the title of today's sermon. No wonder. Have you not gotten to a point where you yourself you are wondering, is there anything new? A ministry starts, it's like you already know where they are going. They get to a point, they start nursery and primary school inside the church building. After a while, they partition, it becomes primary school. After a while, they have secondary school. Now we got to a point, everything is now about having tertiary education. Why? Because one man got an instruction to build a private university, the legendary Archbishop Benson Idahosa. And it became the answer to every other big churches. What this does to those young folks, those who are called thereafter, is that it gives us the impression that we'll understand where God is taking us to already. You start your church, as you are progressing, you start school, you progress to secondary, to tertiary institution. The ones who can't go straight to university, they have a polytechnic. Does it not look as if there is a template already and that we understand the call? But building a school is not the call. Preaching is not even the call. Teaching is not the call. Performing miracles, healing is not the call. We mistake the mission for the call. What is the call? Is there an answer in the Bible? If you miss the concept, the understanding of the call, that is when you have copycats. In each ministries, in every new church, every new denomination that is established. They already know where they are going. Is that the call? And it can be divine. What we have done is that we have mistaken, we have converted the call for an employment in a human organization. When you are employed, you are given an, uh, an appointment letter. Your appointment letter for established organization clearly states what you are expected to do. You can look at their, book, their books and you know what your future is, where you are going. You can tell that in the next three years or two years, if promotion comes by two years, that you will be here. You will be here. That's what we have converted the call into. 
That's what we have converted the call to. So every young guy who starts a ministry already knows what to pro where to progress to. We start from a rentage, if possible. Then we get our own land. Then we start building. After we finish building, then we start a school, a daycare, a crutch. We grow from there. Source of revenue. Is that the call? We mistake the mission for the call. Today, I want to take us to the Bible. Let's look and see if we can find what the call is. It will amaze you and it will shock you. And I'm going to give us four different things to do that you will do when you understand the call. Psalms, as a way of introduction, I'll give us two scriptures. One in, in the Old Testament, the other one in the New Testament. In the book of Psalms 82 verse 5, he said, They know not, neither will they understand. Did you see that? If you don't know the call, how can you understand the call? And if you don't understand the call, how can you walk on the path of the call? So he says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, in ignorance. All the foundations of the earth are out of course as a result of this. They know not, neither will they understand. Neither will they understand. So there is no understanding without knowledge. Look at Matthew 22, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Jesus was referring to a powerful group during his earthly walk, the Sadducees, they were very powerful next to the Pharisees only. From my, from my perspective, they had such massive followership, and they were not, they were the authority in their days. One encounter with Jesus, and that sect crumbled. One encounter. Jesus' response is apt today as it was in those days. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. You are in error. Your actions are erroneous because you do not understand the scriptures. You don't know the scriptures. And because you don't know the scriptures, you can unleash the power of God. Don't you see that it looks as if the power of God has gone to rest? It's on holiday. Apart from a pocket here and there. But something is happening. I will tell you the future of the church today. Not knowing the scriptures because the call was clearly defined in the scriptures. So the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they became a call, a kind of call on their own. Not knowing the scriptures. What about what I explained before? What you see? Somebody gets a call. Everybody needs a mentor. He submits himself to somebody. And what happens is that the person he has submitted to starts modeling him after his ministry. So the implication of that, as good as it sounds, is that that mentee is a replica of his mentor's ministry. So you now ask a question, who called him? If he's being modeled after the ministry, if you look at the relationship between Apostle Paul and Timothy, he never modeled Timothy after him. 
Because then they had the understanding of what the call is. What it did was to provide a guide. So you see a young minister who comes under the calling of a, of, of, of a senior minister begins to do everything the senior minister is doing in his own ministry. Everything. I've given you two scriptures as way of introduction. Saying the same thing. Without knowledge, the understanding of what the call really is, we are in a big mess. And that's the mess we are in right now. So you see, this church, this denomination, starts fetching water. Every other one begins to fetch water. This denomination, in this denomination, somebody gets up to put sow seed on the altar as the pastor is preaching. Every other denomination begins to sow seed on the altar as if as the pastor is preaching. Of course, that one is Jewish. It gives the church more, more revenue. But what is the call? Understanding the call, your life can never be the same after today's message. Matches gospel. Matches gospel chapter 4, verse 19 to 20. And he said unto them, who is speaking? Jesus. What is the call? That's the first thing we want to identify. And he said unto them, what's the next phrase there? Follow me. Matthew 4, 19 to 20. And he said unto them, Follow me. That is the call. The call is to follow him. The call is not to preach, it's not to teach, it's not to build a church, it's not to start up a school. None of those. The call in itself is follow me. Why? Because between the call and the mission, your status is identified by heaven. So the mission does not come until your status has been identified. I'm going to connect it to you in a scripture in one of the Pauline epistles. And I ask myself, my goodness, why haven't we seen this? The call is designed to make every single call an original. What is the call? Follow me. That's the call. The call is follow me. Then look at it. And I will make you. That is a future tense and a process. Understanding the call this morning. The apostle speaking. How didn't we see it? Black and white. It tells you something. Jesus said in John's gospel, the Allos, the Paracletos, the Holy Spirit, when he come, he will open your eyes. He will guide you. You are not the one that opens the book. The Holy Spirit opens it to you. If it does not open it to you, you see nothing. What you'll be doing is academic revelation. That's what you'll be pulling out. It is time. Why would God be giving this message? Too many of us don't even understand what the call is anymore. Why? Because we think we understand the call. The reason we don't know the call is because we know, we think we know the call. Ha! Huh. Very confusing statement right it is not like an organization employment where you see your future from beginning where you know the activities you are to be carrying out preaching teaching is general that's not the call the call is what 
follow me. Not follow me and not follow me and your mentor. Not follow me and your family. Not follow me and the call is follow me. Me alone. When you hear the word follow me, what does that tell you? It gives you the impression that you are embarking on a what? A journey. Follow me. That's the call. The call to every one of us is the same. We are to follow Jesus and Jesus only. So that means there will be a lot of stakeholders engagement between you and Jesus all through your lifetime. It means you are the one to follow him. These days, God, Jesus is following some of us. Because we are the one in front. Why? We know. And I'm going to show you where the early church made the mistake. When they reversed the order. And they asked God to follow them. Hmm. <laughs> the shocking revelation this morning. Understanding the call. What is the call? Jesus said unto them, follow me. That is a, a, like a blank check. One, you don't know where you are going. Two, you do not know the things you are going to face. Three, you have to constantly be in his company. Otherwise, you will embark on another journey. What we have seen today is that very many denominations are on their own. Why didn't we see this? He said, follow me and I will make you. Did you see that? So two steps be before the preaching and teaching even comes in. Are you not seeing it? Two steps you follow. He makes you to become fishers of men. Until he makes you become, you will struggle fishing men. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. We thought the call is preaching and teaching, performing miracles. The call is simply, Madam, follow me. Oga, follow me. The question is, who are you following? I see why he's bringing this message now. Very many ministries are following other ministries. And they have become unnecessary duplicates. That's what it is. They have become unnecessary duplicates. If you take an original copy and you make photocopy, where you are to submit if they say you they need only four photocopies. If you make six, you know two are unnecessary copies because you are not submitting it anyway. Come on, Lord Jesus. Many pastors have become unnecessary duplicates. They have no use, they have no value. Because we thought the call is preaching, the call is teaching, the call is performing miracles. No, that is expression of the call. The call itself is follow Jesus. Follow me. And I will make you become fishers of men. He didn't say follow me because you are fishers of men already. No. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1. You brethren you see not many mighty, not many noble are called. Jesus does not call stupid and send them out as stupid. 
Let me say that again. Jesus will not cause stupid and sin. That same person as stupid. He caused and processed and sends. How many of us have made total blunder and shipwreck of the ministry? Because we thought the call was preaching. The call is follow. And he has given you the step what the follow will lead to. He will lead you to him making you. What does that tell you? That is apprenticeship. That is training. That's training. There are those who think because they got the call, they don't need to undergo any training. They jump out, they open a place, they rent a place, and then they start preaching. No wonder we have so much problem from denominations through doctrines. Because we miss a very vital step. Number one, we didn't understand the call. Two, we didn't understand the process of the call before we are released. He said, follow me and I will make you to become fishers of men. The call is to follow. Some of us are not following anymore. We are asking Jesus to follow us. You know why? We've got all the plans. We know what next we will do. Do you know even in the church, under the call, we have our five-year plan, our ten years plan. Yeah, that's what it is. It is our plan, not his. The early church got to this stage and they made the same mistake. Thank God in the epistles, it was corrected quickly. God will not allow error to stay in his body. My goodness, the call is to follow. If I tell you, I'm going to give you four signs, four things that tells you you are following. Four things. Understanding the call. You cannot be following without leaving something behind. You know why? Look at it practically. Peter, James, John, Andrew, they were all fishing in the boat. Jesus got to that place, performed miracles, and he told them, follow me. Jesus is not a fisher. So they know Jesus was not joining them. They were to follow Jesus. And the Bible said they left their nets and followed him. They left something to follow. Where they are going, they had no clue. Some of us pastors know where we are going. And that's the problem. Understanding the call. The call remains a puzzle. The one who provides the answer is the caller. You continue to follow him every step of the way. Remember at a point in, at a point in Paul's life, it was when I studied Acts of the Apostle very well and I discovered that Paul going to Rome was not Paul's vision. It was the Holy Spirit who told him, you will testify before me in Rome. Go and study the book of Acts. Why? Because that was where the Holy Spirit wanted him to exit. There are things I'm going to show you today. So it, it, it didn't matter how Paul desired it. Paul was not to die in Jerusalem. He was to die in Rome. The call involved both your entry and your exit. And I will share with you if time permits some great generals who mistook this and God corrected them. The call is all about him, not you. The call, you have no contribution as it were. You are not equal partner in the call. You take instruction as a servant master. 
How can you take instruction when you don't hear from him? Or, let me rephrase. How can you take instruction when you already think you know what to do? Where to go? That's why we have the church is in a mess today. Have you seen some of the things happening in churches, particularly in Africa? Where that, one, that place is still a church. What the man does is to bait females naked. Or the one where the pastor asks members to lie down and he matches them, both male and female. It doesn't matter the part of your body he matches and walks on. He doesn't understand the call. Jesus will never molest anybody. So you see, that is his call. Who is he following? He's following himself. He's following himself. Jesus said, follow me. He's never to follow you. And I will make you become fishers of men. And they straightway left their net and followed him. They straightway left their net and followed him. Let me show you something that happened practically after this. That's why I read that verse 20. And they straightway left their net and followed him. Matthew's Gospel chapter 8. From verse 19 to 23. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow you whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Do you understand the implication of what you just said? I'm paraphrasing. When the man said, I will follow you anywhere you go. Jesus paused and asked him, do you know the gravity of the statement you just made? Let me make it very clear to you. Look at it. The foxes have holes. And the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. What was Jesus saying? Foxes have destination known to them. Birds have destinations known to them. He said, but if you follow me, you don't know your destination. That's what he's saying. But so then we know our destination. Like I've told you, you start out small. As the membership grows, you start a school. You start with crash. Crash. Then it becomes nursery. Then it becomes secondary. And then you have tertiary education. <clears throat> hmm? The man said, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, let me make something very clear to you. <laughs> it's not an easy task you are about to embark on. Foxes know their destination. Birds know their destination. This call, you do not know where you are going. I'm not the one talking. This is Jesus talking. These days, we know exactly everything. That is why it is juicy. People are calling themselves evil. Because they know after a while he will get a car. After he gets a car, he builds his own house. After he builds his own house, he has enough money. So people are rushing into it. Jesus was practically scaring the man who said he wants to follow him. Because normally you are not the one that will say you are to follow. It is one that tells you to follow. So when people say some people call God, yeah, that was it. This guy was calling, was making Jesus call him. And Jesus said, listen, let me explain it to you. This is how it goes. It's about the son of man hath not where to lay his head. There's no destination known to you. You better know that now. This was Jesus saying the Son of Man does not have where to lay his head. You know why? Because as at that time he has stripped himself of being all knowing, he was relying on the Holy Spirit. He didn't know the next step until it is revealed. The call is the most difficult task on earth because all you are is a waiter. 
I'll say that again. All you are is a waiter. Pastor's wife these days can even talk their husband into doing things for the ministry. Because everybody now knows the destination. <clears throat> but that's contrary to what Jesus just showed us. You do not know the destination. But we know. Sometimes the vision can even come from our wives. Wow. The guy said, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. Say, hold on. First of all, that's not the order. You don't choose me, I choose you. And this is the implication. You can't know what the future holds until I show it to you. People are excited jumping into the ministry. Whereas, the reverse should be the case. You should be cautious jumping into the ministry. Those who are cautious are the ones who truly don't know the future. The ones who have their future planned out, they are the ones excited to get into the ministry. The Holy Spirit was the one that said to Paul, Do not be afraid. You will also testify before me in Rome. Thereafter, Paul's plan changed. Because you know Paul was, was fixated in going to Jerusalem. In ministering there, in sharing. No. He told him, say, listen, I'm sending you to the Gentiles already. So you forget these guys. It was the Holy Spirit that gave Paul his direction. Because Paul wanted to go to Jerusalem. I must get to Jerusalem and partake of the before Pentecost. You remember that? I need to get to the I need to get to that. I need to get to that. He had his own plan. And then it dawned on him that no, listen, in the call, you don't have your plans. Your plans are a threat to his plans. And then he said, you will testify before me in Rome. So when he got to a point, when his, his court case got to a point, and then ah, the judges were like, this man had not done anything. Because they didn't know why Paul appealed to Caesar. They thought he was trying to escape judgment. No, go and check. Before Paul appealed to Caesar, the Holy Spirit had already told him you will testify before me in Rome. So Paul had gotten his direction. Otherwise, Paul would not have objected. He would never have appealed to Caesar. Paul loved to die in Jerusalem. Remember when that prophecy came and they said, please don't go. Paul was so vexed with them. He was like, what is wrong with you? I don't only want to go to Jerusalem. I want to die there. So Paul's own vision was to die in Jerusalem. So he can get the attention that he deserved. But that was not the plan of the one who said follow. Jesus didn't have plan for Paul to end up in Jerusalem. His plan was for Paul to die in Rome. You see the difference between those who understand the call and the ones who don't. Blessed are the ears of anyone who will hear this message. Particularly those in the ministry. We need a reset button. Every step of the way it was God. That was correcting Paul. As at the point in time he bowed down to James, the half-brother, he almost died. They stoned him. When Peter made mistake, he embarrassed Peter. When he too made mistake, they stoned him. Paul, God is no respecter of any person. You are not a champion before him. You will testify before me in Rome. So when the case got to a point, Paul said, I appeal to Caesar. And no, it didn't make sense. And then one of the judges was like, if this man had not appealed to Caesar, right here he would have been set free. But that would have given Paul his earlier dream of being in Jerusalem. Are you getting the point? Just like some of us have mapped out our ministry. We already know everything we are going to do. Oga, you are in the path of error. Madam, you are in the path of error. You are straight. The call is follow me. You need to be close to him to know the next step. To know the next place, the next location. That was how Paul appealed to Caesar. And that was how he died. His head, his, his neck was chopped off. His head was chopped off. That was what God designed for him. Verse 21 of Matthew 8, 19. 
And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me. Let the dead bury their dead. The calling is not a negotiation between you and Jesus. That's what this disciple was trying to prove. Did you hear the Bible call him a stranger? No, he said he was already a disciple. He too didn't understand the call. He thought it was a negotiation, an equal partnership between two people. Let me let me make something clear to us, to Christians, and to this this is a preaching for ministers, actually. It is not equal partnership. The guy was like, Yeah, 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 I have followed you. Yeah, I'm willing to follow you, but please let me go and take care of something. I need to settle something. And Jesus said, What's wrong with you? You think this is equal partnership? It's not equal partnership. You do as I say. We do not negotiate. Let the dead bury their dead. You have already you already called yourself my disciple. That means you follow me. So if you say wait, listen to the implication. Jesus says follow. And what that means is that he's on the move, right? He's on the move. And then you say wait, stop your movement for me. Let me go and bury my dead. Wow. So you are the caller. The one who can make God stop is the one who owns God. You are the caller then. And Jesus said, what's wrong with you? You think this is equal partnership? This relationship is only one way. You do as you are told. He said, follow me or I leave you behind. That's what he means. When he said, let the dead bury their dead. He was saying, follow me or I leave you behind. Because I am moving. Many of us pastors have been left behind. Maybe that will be another sermon, left behind. Because Jesus is constantly on the move. And so if you have your little plan, do you see how our personal plan makes us miss out of the call? He said follow, indicating movement. You have to continuously follow. That's why he said, we don't have a place where we lay our head. We do not rest. We keep moving. Hmm? We keep moving. It's a lifetime journey. Let me go and bury. Are you stupid? If you go and bury, by the time you finish burying, when you come, you will even know where I am. Glory to Jesus this morning. <laughs> when you come back, you will not know where, where I am. And that is exactly what is happening to many ministries today. They don't even know where the Lord is. So they are following the Lord through another ministry. I'm using very strong languages this morning. They have missed the call. How do you think he would say? What would have led to his saying, Depart from me, ye who walk iniquity. I never knew you. You were not following me. The gift and, and the callings of God are without repentance. So the gift remains with you, but you are never following me. I cannot reward you for following yourself. I can't reward you for following. People don't know that the calling, the judgment of pastors, ministers, they are the strictest. There's no room for error. Such stupid, nasty error. Yeah, I'm yours. But let me go and do my thing. And I'll catch up with you. And he says, if you don't follow me now, you can never catch up with me. That's what he was saying. Follow me or get lost. We are trying to locate Jesus through other ministers. So when he starts a school, you start a school. When he starts this kind of program, you start the kind of program. You are unnecessary photocopy. I've said that again. You have become an unnecessary photocopy. Nobody needs you. At best, you are second best. Not just second best, you are unnecessary. Nobody really needs you. The ministry makes you an original. We think we know everything. We think we know everything. Some of us think when we are called, then we must start from, from the scratch. No, but there are others who are called into other larger ministries. But what the future holds for the church is even more delicate. 
A time is coming the church will converge. I will show you in, in the scripture. It started with divergence to converge. We diverge to converge. The future of the church will get to a point that denominations will collapse themselves and submit to an identified commander in the kingdom. That's what's going to be happening. The reign of the apostles is here. They are warming up. Whole denomination will collapse their structure and submit to an identified commander. They will come with strict discipline. How many churches did Apostle Paul really start? But he had all these churches under his care. How? They submitted them. From where he is in prison, he writes and takes decisions over people outside. Oh, and yet nobody plotted coup. The few places they tried that and taught error, where they plotted coup, he ignored them. Where they taught error, he disciplined them. It is the season of the apostles. It's just getting started. Understanding the call. Follow me. He didn't give you details, and he does not owe you details. Your job is to stick with him and follow him. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Did you see that? He said, we don't have where to lay our head. The son of God does not have where to lay his head. So when he entered a place, the disciples followed. Not the disciples enter a place and ask him to come in. Huh? Did you get that statement? It's not that they entered a place, entered the ship and ask him to come in. No. And he entered a ship and the disciples followed him. It is follow. The call is what? Follow me. Not preaching. Because he said, when you follow, I will make you. So there is a training process. There is apprenticeship period. And that apprenticeship, you never graduate. It's for a lifetime. So let me make the statement clear. I will continue to make you, you evolve as fishers of men. The missions are varied. The call is the same. Whether you are an apostle, you are a prophet, you are a teacher, you are a deacon, whatever it is, the call is the same. It is follow me, not follow us. Four things to follow quickly as I begin to wrap up. It is meant to be a brief sermon this morning. To follow, one, you must stay close always in word, prayers. He doesn't follow you. You follow him. It is called koinonia in the Greek. It means fellowship. Deep fellowship. The Greek word koinonia, let me even tell you what it means. Koinonia in the Greek talks about intimacy, sexual relationship between husband and wife, not between couple, not, not, not between partners, rather. Husband and wife. In fact, I don't use the word couple anymore because it's been bastardized. It's been adulterated. So you have to be specific between husband and wife, not husband and husband, not wife and wife. Romans 1.26 to 30 says an aberration. Scripture abhors it. To follow, you must stay close always. Second Timothy 2 verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved. Did you see it? Get busy. Study, not just read. Study. To show thyself approved unto who? God. You are not showing off to your congregation. You are not trying to impress some big man of God or some big woman of God. He says, study to show yourself approved. So you see, your approval comes per second. It's per day. 
You don't study yesterday and go to sleep today and think your approval comes tomorrow. It's a continuous thing. Study to show yourself approved unto God. He said, follow me and I will what? make you become. The process of making you become is part of the study. But how many pastors read? How many will study to get sermons? We go to internet to download message and preach to our congregation. That's a lost man. If you are in that church, I, if you are in that congregation, I pity you. You are following your pastor. He's not following Christ. Paul said, follow me even as I follow Christ. So you must see the evidence that he's following Christ. And you know, it's not boring. They can't tell you the whole future. Because he reveals it as it is revealed to him. Wow. To follow, you must constantly stay close because follow indicates it's moving. No time to take holiday. No, 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 no. No time to start developing your own thing. Jesus told that disciples clearly. That disciple clearly. As you wait, the entourage does not stop for anybody. We don't wait. I don't wait. I keep moving. By the time you are done with doing your thing, you won't meet me where you left me. Then you now start looking for me instead of following me. The question is this morning, man of God, woman of God, are you looking for Jesus or you are following him? Where did you branch out that you can't find him anymore? Now you are looking for him. At a point in time, his parents were not smart enough Instead of them following him, they were looking for him in the temple. They had gone two plus days journey. They had to return back. Many of us are already in that, in that uh, category. Jesus is missing. Rather, we are missing. Jesus is never missing. He's always on the move. So if you are waiting to have a sweet time, he has gone past you. Ministers must avoid distraction. Jesus will not be waiting for you outside that hotel room where you have gone to commit adultery. He's on his way. He's moving. When you are done with satisfying yourself, you have to locate him. You don't have the GPS. His GPS is the Holy Ghost. He too was not in that mess with you. He followed Jesus. The call is not simple. Every time I think of the call, I am scared. But I have people who are so excited about the call and I wonder what is wrong with me or what is wrong with them. Now I realize the question is what is wrong with them. They are excited because they know the future. Me, I am cautious because I don't know the future. I don't even know the next step. I only know where I am. And that's what it means to follow. He entered the ship. The disciples entered. He climbed the mountain. The disciples climbed the mountain. He entered Gethsemane to pray. The disciples followed him. Don't you see they didn't have their plans? That's number two. Jesus occupied them. They submitted their plans to his. Otherwise, they'll continue to have conflict. You can't keep up with the two. So, number two. You can't have your plans, but he's revealed. You can't have your plans, but he's revealed. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 13. Let me quickly read. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 13. You can have your plans. You just sit there, they just sit down. It has become a pattern. Start with the church, buy land, build. Who told you you must build? Some are called, a part of their operation. Didn't you hear that the Bible said there are diversities of operations? No, but we have changed everything to be the same. 
Some persons, so they don't have any time. They don't have time building. They see structure, they buy, and they renovate. Which one is he asking you to do, Oga? Madam, you have become a rank zero, sir. A photocopier. You are on your own, no? Understanding the call this morning. But as it is written, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9 to 13. I had not seen. Did you see that? For those of us who already know our future, who knows what the call holds for us? Who knows the next step we are to take? Five years time, ten years time, twenty years time, we even know what to do, really. Except he revealed it. But if I check some of your plans, I will see clearly that it looks like the other minister so <laughs> Except with different name. Mm, the same school, but different name, of course. Can't be the same name. They won't get approval from government. So we are rank zero, sir. So we are photocopiers. I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Did you see that? But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Did you see that? So if you are not with the spirit, if you don't wait on the spirit, you can't get the revelation. I said we are waiters. That's all we are. A waiter does not come to you and dictate what you eat. A waiter comes to you so that he or she can know what to serve you. We are waiters before him. The Bible never said those that know themselves shall renew their, their strength. It said they that wait on the Lord. Only waiters renew their strength. That you serve swallow to this customer or that you serve swallow to 10 customers that day doesn't mean all customers that they will be interested in swallow. That's what we have turned the ministry into. And we deprive people of what they really need to eat. So when they come, we are choking the other man's mission and operation down their throat. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. Did you, oh, 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 oh did we just say that? You see, even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit, it, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Note. He alone decides your exit also. Some time ago, the legendary Archbishop Benson in the the more I study this man, the more I'm privileged to see that we, 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 we knew ne next to nothing about the man. He was not sharing the things God did with him. I recently learned how several times his police escort they had to carry them into the vehicle. It is when they are on their way that they wake up. The people who were close to him studied him up to a point that even his PA warned people there is a time not to touch the man's Bible. Don't carry his Bible. Don't touch it. If you touch it, you go under the anointing. They, they have to carry you into the car. I'm saying his police escort. They witness with them said several times they carry police into the car. It's when they are expressed that they regain consciousness. Why? Because they went to touch him, to try to protect him. So he said they have so studied him to a point, they look at his countenance. He said when he's at the peak of his anointing, his eyeballs become small and very red. Once they see him like that, they don't ask him questions, they don't touch him. Don't talk to him. And he said he was in one of those occasions as they were traveling, Along the, the road, suddenly his car stopped and they saw him come down. That was unscheduled. He said when they walked close to where he was, he, he saw that sign. His eyeballs had become small and very red. He said none of them went close to him. None of them asked, Papa, why did we stop? And they saw a crowd gathered. A vehicle had just knocked somebody. 
How long has Papa been here in Benin City? You were traveling. We were going to Abuja for program. Veiko just killed the man. He even defecated on his body. He had died. So people he gathered and they were just waiting. Ah, I just killed this man. Said the Archbishop just walked to where the dead cop is and commanded life to come upon him. The man sneezed, got up, he gave them water and said they should take him to the hospital. And he entered there and he left. The man does not share testimonies. We, we knew little of him. He followed Jesus' pattern. See, you tell no one. He said, when he's in that mood, even if you pick his Bible, you go under the anointing. He went to Bishop Wallow church. Miracles happened. People crowded. All the ministers, the, whole, the room was filled. Said they were watching from afar. And they said, no, he should bless them before he go, before he leaves. So he said, just lift up his, his hand. He said, Jesus. He said the only person that was standing was him. Every other person, including, the, including his, his uh, host. He had not said anything. Only Jesus came out from his mouth and everybody was down. They went to the east. They were, he said normally the, the order is that they go straight to the hotel. That they said they should go straight to the crusade and then they were wondering what is happening. Some athlete people were in the on the feet practicing. They said as soon as his feet step touched the ground, the floor. People doing practice, people started manifesting. He had not said his leg just his feet just touched the ground, the same ground, very large feet. Miracles started happening. It was not crusade time. Demons were shouting. People were being delivered. Just his feet touching the ground. You know, people become get zealous. He had an encounter with Katrikuma where, where Katrikuma laid hands on his head and said no hand can ever come upon his head anymore. No human being, no man born of a woman can lay hands on his head. Benny he heard that. In one meeting, they said Benny he wanted to lay hands on Papa. Papa removed his cap. As Benny he laid hands on him, Benny he was thrown. He said, Papa put back his cap. He said, I'm glad it was a black man that threw me down. The anointing on a black man. So you see, there is grace. In the kingdom, there is rank. Benny Hinn's grace was not up to Katrikuma. And he heard, I am very sure he heard of that encounter. He wanted to. He got slain. So the when the one that is to pray is the one that is slain. You see, some things happen. Things happen. There was one time I was ministering, and the person that was holding people, she was so close to me. And then we're going, we're so so I, I turned back to ask her to do something. As soon as I turned, she looked at me eyeball to eyeball, and then she went under the anointing. And I was confused. So who is going to catch people? <laughs> so, so things happen when the Holy Spirit is triggered. But you see, you only see those things when you follow. From all the stories I've, I've told you, you can see that protocols were broken. Because he's following. He says, follow me, not yourself. Some of us have become experts in ministry work. And then we are teaching people how to grow in ministry what next to do, how to become great in ministry. Oga, okay? you don't know nothing. That is how he led you. Don't teach others. Glory to Jesus. Don't teach them that that is how he will lead them. The key is follow. That's the instruction. Are you with me? Yes, sir. He only decide your ed exit. The Archbishop was preaching one time and then he said, I have booked appointment with God that I'm going to leave 120. The Holy Spirit corrected him because the, the day, months before he will exit, he now knew that he was not getting to 120. He was living at 59. 
he told Pastor Chris Oyakilome months before. In 1997, that should be December, he left March 1998, March 12. He told Pastor Chris that something will happen before March 14th of 1998. Two days before that date. That was his exit. And that was the day he called for Chris. He sent for Chris. Laid his hands on him. He transferred Matthew to him. These are things that are not common. They are not public knowledge. People don't know. Church of God mission was the least of archbishop. He was an apostle to nations. Churches su submitted themselves to him. So what I've said now, what I said earlier, that the era of the apostles where denominations will collapse. This time around, they won't maintain their name. They will submit even their names. It happened on that archbishop. Churches submitted themselves fully to him. So you, even your exit, he decides it. You don't have a plan when you are following him. Your only plan is to follow his plan that he will reveal to you. Are you hearing the apostle this morning? Understanding the call. So there is no reason why pastor's wife should fight with their husband, particularly the one who is following him. Except you are taking the place of Jesus. He's going to take you out. That's one thing he doesn't joke with. Anyone who becomes an obstacle, he takes that person out. The person is instantly replaced. Because the work of the ministry must go on. That's a warning to pastor's wife. Number three, succession isn't your business. He will decide. Succession. Who takes after me? Who steps in next? It's not your business because he said follow. That's all he asked you to do. He didn't ask you to plan for who, who will take over from you. How many ministries have made serious blunder by planning for succession? The legendary Archbishop Benson Idaosa knew that that was not part of the plan. He did not appoint, he did not name a successor. Even though he knew when he was going to exit, the very day he left, he sat on the dining and he told them that who is ready to go to heaven with him now? That same day, few hours to when he exited. Then he left the dining, sat on the couch, called. The last person he communicated with was the director of all nations. He gave him instruction what and what and what and what to do. He sat down, he breathed deeply and that was it. When he left the office, he told the secretary, I'm going home. He came back again and said, I said, I am going home. So the secretary was confused. Because if he had said, I'm going home, of course, okay, 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 good night, Papa, see you tomorrow. He came back and said, I said, I am going home. A few hours later, he got the call. He's gone home. So he knew. But there was a time he thought, it was a bargaining. 120. I said, you don't neg we are not equal partners in the call. <laughs> He's the master. You are the servant. It's not equal partnership. You don't negotiate with him. Dr. Miles Moreau, when the news of Archbishop going home, home going, got to him, he said premature. And he to talk about living long life and heaven said no i'm taking you your wife and your children at the same time the same day he died in a plane crash his own jet took him to heaven yeah that's a good way to fly home your own jet not another person's vehicle these are great people who had great plans beyond their time may i never have a plan outside of your plan May I never set a timeline beyond your timeline. I may no force in hell stop me before my timeline. Miles Moreau left with his wife and I think one of their daughters, about three or four of them left in his own jet. 
private jet. What a way to go. You are the one who sees it as nasty, no? With all the anointing the apostles carried, look at how all of them exited. They were all martyred except John. So you see, we get into business that we have no business getting involved in, like planning our succession. Look at it. That was the only time the, the early church made a blunder. Act of the Apostles, chapter 1, from verse 23 to 26. I'm taking my time to read this thing so that you know what, what it is. Are you there? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, 23 to 26. And they appointed two. Now look at the mystical. The early church thought they had known so much. So you see, there is always one error we will make so that the glory, ultimate glory, belongs to Jesus. There is no perfect minister. There is no perfect ministry. There is no perfect ministry work. When you study each and every one of them, go and look at the God's generals, Alexander, Dorway, Jack Hoy. There is always something they missed. Because he is the ultimate one, the only one we follow. So when we become distracted, we miss where he is. So that's when we see this error. So at a point, the disciples, they were more sorrowful than they were attentive. And then they missed the point. Look at it. And they appointed to who, who did they. Whereas they forgot where they started from. Matthew, follow me. Who said follow? It was Jesus. So they have arrogated Jesus' function to theirs. And they appointed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus and Matthias. And they prayed <laughs> and said, Thou Lord, which knowest the heart of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. So they were the one giving God instruction. How many times do we make that mistake? You thought that was divine? No, that was not divine. That was carnal. They brought two people before God and said, God, choose for us either of these two. So they unstring God. They com compel God to make a choice that they had provided for him. What a colossal. One way where ministries make great mistakes is in their succession. That, that's why you observe very few succession succeed. Most succession knows dive. Because they chose for God. They brought two and said, look at these two. He said that justice of Matthias. Choose. And to make matters worse, they cast lots. They wrote things on paper and they threw. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna pick. And they said they prayed. That was a mockery of prayers. If they truly wanted to pray, first of all, they would appoint nobody. They would devote themselves to God and ask God to reveal. When you look at the scripture very well, the one that was revealed was Paul. Not Matthias. The first day we heard of Matthias was the last day we heard of him. It's not his fault they put him in that problem, in that position. He was on his own when they called him. Jesus called them, they called Matthias. You don't have right to call anybody. The one who calls remains him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus called them. They had the audacity to call. These days, churches call people. They call people into pastoral work. And then they pour oil on their head. No wonder our, our problems are getting compounded. Because Jesus had left us. Like the Laodicean church that Jesus left behind. They locked him out. And they said they were okay. And he said you are poor, miserable, blind, and stupid. May God help us. Number four. What are you leaving behind to follow? When he says follow, you are leaving something. They left their nets and sheep and followed him. What are you leaving behind to follow? Mark 10, 28 to 31. It was so apparent that Peter was triggered one day 
why Jesus was teaching, and he blotted out. He said, then Peter began to say unto him, you know, once Peter don't trigger, and I ain't get big mouth. Then Peter began to say, lo, did you see the statement? So the man was angry. He didn't now understand. Lo, we have left all. Wait, when he said we have left all, does it mean Peter was no longer married? Did he divorce his wife? No. But he lived like he was single. Uh huh. Thank God he had an understanding wife. He had an understanding family. Please, pastor's wife or pastor's husband, as the case may be, their children, their family, you must understand that the call precedes the marriage. The call supersedes the marriage. The call supersedes the marriage. The call supersedes the family. So you must learn to cooperate. God does not owe you. You owe him. So you attach yourself. Many spouses have destroyed themselves because at a point they were competing with God for their husband or wives depending on the one that is called. And before you know, they start making trouble with the one that is called. Heaven always reacts. It doesn't end well. It, it, it doesn't always end well. Because God does not owe you an excuse. The call precedes, supersedes the marriage, supersedes the family. Peter said, we have left all. That's why I'm reading it to you. Have you forgotten Jesus prayed for Peter's mother's in-law? Huh? So, but Peter said, we have left all. No wonder Paul said, for those who are married, they live like they are, they are not single. That's what the call can turn you into. He said, we have left all. I picked that word. We have left all. But he's still married. He didn't need to divorce. He didn't need to be promiscuous. But he said, we have left all. Because Jesus took a, Jesus determined their movement, their time, and their place. We have left all, and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospels. Verse 30, But he shall receive an hundredfold, now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands if you notice he didn't say wives with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life but many that are first shall be last and the last first did you see it he's saying there is no order you don't decide who is senior i decide who is senior in this call and you know them Archbishop Duncan William, perhaps he was not bearing the same title as the Archbishop, had a very rough time in life because he was rubbing shoulders with the Archbishop Ben Simidausa. Heaven does not take that in kindly. Last shall be first, first shall be last. What that means is that you don't decide your placement. I do. So let's be careful. So you can have that, that one you call small boy. You are senior to him in age. But it's your senior by rank, spiritually. If you disrespect him, if you disrespect him, you'll be surprised how the heavens will be shot against you. Nothing worked for Duncan Williams until he opened, until he humbled himself before the Archbishop. So for those of you who think because we, we all perform miracles, we all speak in tongues, therefore you can talk to people anyhow. If it is a dangerous thing for a fellow minister to talk to his or her senior identified by God, imagine what happened to just any person, one refrag, who is insulting a great man of God. Pity them. Nothing worked for Archbishop Duncan Williams. They got pride entered him at that point. He thought structure had been thrown off and suddenly the heavens got shot. God does not joke with that. So if you want to follow, you have to be cautious. No anyone who truly understands the call, none is excited about the call. They are very cautious, as is yours sincerely. 
sometimes when he speaks and he's opening up and I, I am scared I am scared not of the enemy I am scared of the task he's revealing because for by strength no man can take on that so but you see guys jumping up buying suit and then they are so excited about the call they are on their own no? Jesus had left them behind because if you are following him and you don't know where you are going, you are never excited going to a place you don't know the destination, are you? You are constantly looking out so that you can have signposts. If somebody is taking you to a place for the first time, are you excited? No, it's mixed feelings. If you are smart, you are looking at everywhere so that you can remember in case something go wrong. That's exactly what the call is. You are following him. But some of us have asked him to follow us. And he told that guy, that's not going to happen. Let's rise up on our feet. Understanding the call this morning. I told you before we started that this, this message is going to revolutionize your life. It's a big one. I've been on my feet for more than one hour, 16 minutes. This is a message that every pastor, every minister needs to hear. Many of us need a reset if we are ever going to make it. Some of us are strayed too far away from him. We, are, we need to relocate him so that we can continue on our journey. Oh God, I know the future. Oh God, I have plans. You are on your own. Let's give him praise this morning. Understanding the call.